everyone is at risk. I had never imagined this kind of a situation before. I did help myself but to worry. Nakakamiss kumasok sa school. Hindi ko na pumasok sa isip ko pagdating sa edukasyon. Nakakamiss yung mga kaibigan ko. I thought this might just be something like the swine flu from 2009. San Pablo Colleges and Central Student Government presents Invincible Vectors versus Invisible Virus All Saints and All Souls Day beat COVID-19 battle Joey DeJoss is checking whether his cash register still works Yeah, zero He owns Cafe 80s in one of the most popular districts in Manila. But the restaurant bar has been empty for almost four months because of the coronavirus pandemic. It's like a ghost bar. No income. Before, this bar was uh, packed. My staff has been here for six years. So it's very hard to tell them that uh, we'll be uh, shutting down if nothing happens until December. It's a familiar scene all across the Philippines. Businesses are closing at a pace unseen in recent years. The Philippine government imposed one of the world's strongest, strictest lockdowns, which lasted from March till June. More than 50 million Filipinos were forced to stay at home in the entire region of Luzon. But the soaring number of coronavirus infections last month forced the government to announce another lockdown two weeks ago. We want to ensure the safety of our people. However, some sectors in our economy, especially the MSMEs, are barely surviving. The Philippine government admits it is forced to open the economy despite the growing number of coronavirus infections. That is because the country is now in one of its worst periods of recession in recent decades. Millions of Filipinos have lost their jobs and more communities are expected to sink deeper in poverty in the coming months. Julius Evangelista used to earn around $300 a month as a jeepney driver. That was barely enough to feed his family, but he says somehow they were able to get by. But life became much worse two months ago when the lockdown was imposed by the government to stop the spread of coronavirus. He is unable to work and pay for the house rent in Manila. So they live like this now, in a jeepney, begging in the street just to feed his family. This is really tragic. I can see how my children suffer. They have scabs from our situation here. And we don't know when our next meal will come. Christian Garcia also says the pandemic brought more suffering for his family. He used to be a professional photographer, but when the lockdown of the entire region of Luzon happened, work stopped coming in too. He found a job as a delivery driver, earning less than half of what he used to. Yung image na inaalagaan mo na professional line ka na. Imagine, I had years and years of professional experience. I swallowed my pride and rolled up my sleeves just so I can earn. Times are hard, but we simply don't have a choice anymore. It is a matter of survival now. Just like millions of people across the country, the Feliciano family have been asked to stay indoors and to practice social distancing. But that is nearly impossible, for this is the place they call home, a 12-square-meter house for nine members of their family. The house is in Tondo, one of the poorest neighborhoods in the country. The coronavirus has been spreading at a frantic pace, isolating families and snuffing out lives. A hunger and emotional infirmity grip the nations. The hope of a containment also dims. No one has seen this enemy coming. The world has underestimated COVID-19. Good day, everybody. I am Emil David Ortega. 
And I am Dayan Urbanito from Mascom Society. We asked some students of San Pablo Colleges two questions. What came first into your mind when you heard about COVID-19 reaching the Philippines? When I heard about COVID-19 has reached the Philippines, one thing that came first into my mind is everyone is at risk of being infected by the virus. Not only myself, but also my family, as well as the larger community outside our home. So, no una ko siyang narinig way back um, January 2. The first thing that came to my mind was the safety of my family. Kasi my dad and mom's workplace requires them to interact with a lot of people. And we all know naman that um, COVID-19 is a contagious disease. Um, yung brother ko and my little sister are still students. So basically, lahat talaga kami sa pamilya ay um, exposed outside. Which is normal until this pandemic happened. First, oo, oh, oh, nandun yung takot and yung frustration siguro sa government natin. Kasi what if mas pinaaga pa nila yung um, pag-implement ng travel ban? Siguro things wouldn't have turned out this way. So my time stopped last March when our president um, declared that our country will be placed under quarantine. Mm, no una, masaya. Siyempre, as a student, parang wow, napaaga yung bakasyon. Then, na-miss yung um, finals, yung mga dapat gawin, na school works. Pero hapang tumatagal siya. It starts to get boring and tiring kasi paulit-ulit lang yung nangyayari. To be honest, um, I never imagined na tatagal yung quarantine for, what, 7 months na ba or 8 months? Um, nakakamiss din sa labas. Nakakamiss pumasok sa school. Nakakamiss yung mga kaibigan ko. Lahat. And even kapag yung times na nag-celebrate kami ng birthdays ko with my family sa labas. Yun, namiss namin yun this year. And lahat ng plano ko nasira. Plans ko for my studies, the plans I made with myself and with my family. Lahat yun na-delayed and yung iba pa nga ay totally na-cancel na. Our safety. That was the first thing that came to my mind when I heard about the COVID-19 has reached here in the Philippines. At first, it was so difficult for me because that time, my dad was still working in abroad and my mom lives in Quezon province with my younger brother. So that means I'm the only one who lives here in Nagoya. So I prepared myself physically and mentally, especially when I found out that the total lockdown will be implemented by our government. So I couldn't help myself but to worry, to worry about global pandemic is not necessarily something I thought would ever happen in my life. I think that goes for all of us. It's a strange experience and everyone is being affected so differently. I remember hearing about the coronavirus, where it originated from and how there was uh, someone with the virus in the Philippines. I didn't think too much of it. I thought this might just be something like the swine flu from 2009. When the World Health Organization declared a global pandemic, that's when things changed for me mentally. I had never imagined this kind of a situation before. It's something I had only heard about from history books. I think uh, every day we are still trying to wrap our heads around the world. How do you calm yourself every day knowing that COVID-19 has no definite end? I calm myself through being optimistic and see the bright side in these darkness times. 
I also practice myself of doing the health protocols and guidelines in order to minimize the probability of being infected by the virus. I guess I calm myself by staying at home kasi the safest place naman talaga sa panahon ngayon ay sa bahay. Though nandun yung thoughts na ah, nakakamiss gumala ah, gusto kong lumabas. Mas nanging ibabaw pa rin yung ah, sa bahay na lang ako, mas safe. And, ayun nga, I have improved my personal hygiene as well as my self-discipline na rin. Kasi para sa akin, as long as sumusunod ka sa protocol, inside and outside your premises eh mas mapifeel mong safe ka diba? mas nagiging kalmado ka na ah hindi ako magkakaroon ng COVID hindi ako nakahawa or anything also I keep myself busy like ginagawa ko yung mga modules ko yung hobbies ko na nagagawa ko dito sa bahay and anything para hindi ko maisip yung COVID talaga then sa tingin ko naman matatapos din yung COVID Not now, pero soon siguro kapag na-utilize na yung mga bagay na dapat gamitin pag nalagay na yung sa dapat nilang kalagyan. As well as yung naging successful na yung mga researches ng mga scientists sa pag-discover ng vaccine. Then everything will be back to normal. Hopefully. I think it's normal. It's normal to get panic, especially when you heard about the news, about the latest COVID updates. We can really avoid it. For me naman, I have a lot of effective ways para mapakalma sarili ko. Like, nagpo-focus ako sa online class, self-study, and also social media. Because in social media, there's a lot of stuffs and videos na nagpapasaya sa atin na hindi natin may aaki na kahit kaunting oras lang, nililimutan natin yung problema na idulot ng COVID-19. Dahil sa mga nababasa natin na patuloy pa rin yung pagtaas ng cases sa bawat lugar, hindi natin yung may itatago. And also, one of the reasons kaya mapapakalma rin ako is kapag nakausap ko yung family ko. Especially kapag nalaman ko na safe sila dahil to sila, sobrang laki sa na bibigay sa akin. Dahil yun ang pinagdadasal ko kay God na kaligtasan ng lahat at sana matapos na ang pangyari. I think a lot about how There are so many people struggling with mental health issues and how this pandemic is affecting them. For those people that live alone or are experiencing a sort of social isolation, I hope that they are able to be around others at times and uh, that our society won't criticize too much about social distancing as long as everyone is responsible. I am very glad that there are so many people spreading positivity so uh, we can all be reminded of good things that are still happening. I'm facing myself every day and focusing on what I need to get done. I just hope that things can start to go back to normal as long as everyone continues to be mindful of themselves and other around them. We all need to remember to be positive and enjoy the good moments in our lives no matter how small Because that can help us overcome this one day at a time. But today, as we commemorate our saints and beloved deceased loved ones, whom we call our angels, let us be reminded that they are always beside us. Yes, not seen by our naked eyes, but always felt in our hearts. They are there to keep us guarded in this time of pandemic. We are not alone in fighting the invisible virus as we combat together with our invincible victories. All Souls Day is a holiday of the Catholic Church that celebrates the faithful departed. 
In Catholic belief, the faithful who have died in God's grace, but in a state of attachment to sin, must be cleansed before they can enter into heaven. These souls are in purgatory, and they are washed clean by the prayers of the faithful on earth. All Souls Day is celebrated in the Western world on November 2nd, and it is a day of prayer for all those who have departed. It should not be confused with All Saints Day on November 1st, where Catholics honor those who are believed to be in heaven. All those who enter purgatory will eventually enter heaven once their souls are perfected. Prayers for the dead dates back to Jewish tradition as described in the Old Testament. In the second book of Maccabees, a day of prayer for the dead was set aside. All Souls Day was established as an annual tradition in the medieval church and it has been celebrated ever since. In the Eastern Orthodox Church, there are several such days, mostly celebrated on Saturdays throughout the year. Protestants are generally opposed to such celebrations on theological grounds. It, in fact, was the debate over the souls of the departed that started Martin Luther's heresy and led to his omission of all references to prayers for the dead from his Protestant translation of the Bible. This is why there are fewer books in the Protestant Bible than the Catholic. In some parts of the world, such as Latin America, All Souls Day is celebrated on this day. All Souls Day is important because we dedicate that day to our loved ones and our ancestors to pray for their departed souls. By our efforts, those in purgatory reach heaven, and by the efforts of our descendants, we too will arrive. We also got the chance to interview the St. Pablo College's chaplain, Reverend Father Loreto Sato II. Hello, magandang gabi po. Uh, una sa lahat po, kamusta po kayo? Okay naman dito, kahit medyo malungkot. Okay um, lang. <laughs> Siyempre, nandiyan lang malang. po si God along with you, tsaka po yes. sa amin yes. yung mga alagad. Guardian Angels. <laughs> Let's um, move on na po sa ating mga questions since this is a very brief interview. By the way, Father, thank you so much po na binigyan niyo po kami ng time ngayon, lalo na medyo mahira po yung uh, communication natin. Eh, nabigyan niyo pa rin po ang, ng oras ang SPC to uh, conduct this. So, moving on to our first question. Father, why do we need to commemorate All Saints and All Souls Day? Ah, there's no need to commemorate all this because it's part of, you know, there are, there is one, only one church, but there are categories in the church of being a church. We, we have this um, suffering church, triumphant church, and then the other one is the, the journeying church. I... I I forget exactly the term for that, but the triumphant church are those people who belong to the church who are already enjoying the the rewards of heaven. And then the suffering church, they are the the people who are they are already bound to heaven, but then again because of some sins or some of the um blemishes that they have when they were still here on earth <clears throat> for, for a reason that only those pure can enter heaven they should undergo the pur purgation or, or purification and then we are the church the journeying church and we build all those who are alive and have received baptism belong to that so in order for us to <clears throat> to manifest our communion with these two churches, the triumphant and the suffering church. We commemorate the the saints and all those who are also undergoing purgation because we are, we are only one church and we show communion to them. So it's only fitting that we remember them so that what, is, what are the purposes of remembering them? Of course, for our own good also. So we know that these people are, who are already joining heaven who also while still living here on earth we should strive hard 
and to persevere in our faith. While we know also that these people were suffering, it should also give us a warning that, you know, if we, we do not want to undergo this stage, we should um, try to live out our lives according to the teachings of the Lord. So, in, one, and in this way, we are actually expressing our communion with them, and at the same time, it also gives us um, indications that we should also, or a reminder to, you know, strive hard to become good Christians. So that's why we commemorate them. And aside from the fact that we also seek their help, the, especially those who are already in the triumphant. Uh, thank you, Father, for the answer to the first question. So mm -hmm. with all uh, the crisis, all the problems, social issues, health, <coughs> Uh, crisis that we experience po ngayong uh, panahon na ito, uh, mm -hmm. sa tingin niyo po, uh, how do Filipino religiosity help us during this pandemic? Oh, of course. The religiosity is always an ace factor, uh, X factor, I mean, for us Filipinos. We believe in transcendence and we have this gift of faith. And so, therefore, when you have faith, a lot of things happen and it makes you know our life although we find it difficult nowadays to you know adjust and to face all these new situations that we are facing but then again when we have faith i do not say that it this difficulties will be removed but when you have faith you will have the power to you know make things bearable so it gives you strength and it gives you the courage to move forward in spite of all the hurdles, the hindrances, the difficulties that we face. So it's really important that we nourish our faith so that we can, you know, we can surpass this or overcome. It's, I think that's the appropriate term. Overcome all these problems, all these difficulties that we are facing right now. Yes, that is right, Father. Actually, I believe that that is the reason why Filipinos are very resilient. Um, yes. kahit ano man po yung lumipas, even though there's a lot of storms, problems, pandemic, or this quarantine that we are currently experiencing, Filipinos uh, really are not um, losing the faith. They are always praying to God. Kaya bibihira yung nakikita natin na mga Pilipino na tuwing panahon ng bagyo, panahon ng mga gato mga problema, nabihira yung nakikita natin mga Pilipino na nakasimangot. Yeah. Pa, <coughs> yeah. yeah, they are so, I know, these other people who are not Filipinos are so baffled with the way we deal with things. The, the things that, I, that they do not know that we are strong in faith. That's why we are able to do the things that are according to some of the people are impossible to do. That is right. Father. So, yun po, um, moving on to the third question in connection po sa second question natin. What do you want to say to all San Pablo Colleges community to uplift their spirits to trust and persevere during this pandemic? Of course, as I, I, I my homily a while ago for our culmination of the Mass of the Holy Rosary was something to this effect that I told them I told the, the congregation, including those online onlookers, perhaps, <laughs> because we have this live message a while ago. A while ago. Um, the, the, the things that I emphasized in my reflection a while ago is that it's the rediscovery of our faith. Mm -hmm. So if, if, if because of pandemic, somehow you find yourself in the dark, but then again, you only have to rediscover or discover the faith because faith is really something that can move you forward can give you the strength and courage to go to go and persevere and i said in my homily that faith is stronger than fear so when you are fearful somehow it paralyzes you it it, it deprives you of the freedom of movement right so when you have your faith and I said that faith is stronger than fear. Somehow, the fear, although it will be there, it will remain because we are human beings and it's part of our being to fear. 
But then again, when we have faith, as I said, a lot of things will be overcome when we when we have faith. And I said, uh, I can say this to to some public college students that I when you are finding yourself in the dark and when you are in doubt, when you are anxious, when you are fearful, just remember that there is one Lord that you can reach out your hands to. And I said in my home a while ago that when you reach out to God, when you try to reach out the hands of God, He will not only reach out your hands, but He will definitely embrace you. As part of the commemoration, the Central Student Government conducted various competitions. Face mask making competition, face shield making competition, and personal protective equipment. From grade school to college apartments, depicting our invincible victors, saints, and angels. These are the mechanics of the competition. First, each grade level, year level, strand, and department must have a representative. Second, is the base of the face mask, face shield, and personal protective equipment must be made and not bought. It can be a cloth or plastic or any materials you have at home. Third is the design of the face mask, face shield, and personal protective equipment must be aligned on the theme of the event, which is saints and angels. Lastly, of course, is enjoy the process. And the criteria for judging, interpretation and clarity of the theme to the viewer, 25%. Creativity and originality of the depicted theme, 25%. Quality and artistic composition and overall design based on the theme, 20%. Fan votes in FB or Facebook, 30% with a total of 100%. At this point, allow me to present to you our respected Board of Judges. Without further ado, here are the videos of all the SPCNs who sent their entries. My name is Ryan John Bernalillo, Quintal Carter. I will make San Roque face mask. Hi, my name is Angel Natalie Brian Jimenez. SPC grade 1 student from State St. Stephen. Today, let's get creative and be protective to make an angel mask. Hi everyone, my name is Ravina Louis M. Reyes. I'm from grade 2. Today, guys, we're going to make face masks. Hi, I'm Lamarcus Emilio Failon. I am grade 4 student from San Pablo Colleges. Today, I'm going to teach you how to make a face mask for COVID protection. Hi everyone, I'm Nika Veniz Bondadalus, grade 5 St. Peter. Justin Ras Mojica Suasa, grade 5 student from SPC. Today, we are going to make our DIY face mask. Good morning, everyone. My name is Elijah Christophe Wongavino, grade 7, Cherry Blossom. Hi, everyone. I'm Jem Iron C. Sanchez from grade 10, Magdalene. I'm Adrian S. Guevara from the College of Education. SPCN and I care. Jesus loves you. 
I am a SPCN and I care. Jesus loves you. I am an SPCN and I care. Jesus loves you. This face shield is inspired by San Pedro Calungsod, the second saint from the Philippines. Wearing face shield is important today to prevent the spread of and acquiring of COVID-19. As Pedro Calungsod ministered at a young age, I think being part of the prevention of this virus is also a ministry I can take part in. Let us see San Pedro Calungsod as an example of not being hindered by our age or any circumstance from sharing God's words. I am SPC and, and I care. Jesus loves you. Face shield is the new normal necessity that you shouldn't forget to bring when going outside. According to the Department of Health, when face shield is added to the normal face mask and social distancing, it will give 99% protection from coronavirus. It basically covers the entire face and with its plastic support, the droplets of the virus won't reach our faces and prevent the COVID-19 transmission. So to protect ourselves as well as the other people around you, specifically in public places, always wear face shield. That's how important it is during this pandemic period. I am a SPCN and I care. Jesus loves you. Amidst the pandemic, our modern heroes are fighting without any fear and doubt. They stood up every day with strong determination and their hearts. It has been really thought, but they never get tired protecting us. With that, we sincerely salute all the frontliners around the world. Maraming salamat po at mabuhay kayo. I am an SPCN and I care. Jesus loves you. There we have it, SPCNs. Here are the important dates we marked down to make these competitions happen. The date of announcement is student, October 9, 2020. The date of submission, October 6, 2020. The date of judging, October 30 to 31, 2020. The date of voting in CSG official page, October 31, 2020 from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And today is the most awaited announcement of our event. With the help of our schoolmates and the expertise of the Board of Judges, it is our pleasure to present the winners in today's Invincible Victors Defeat Invisible Virus All Saints and All Souls Day Featuring COVID-19 Battle Congratulations to all the winners. This has been Abel David Ortega and Diane Rebenito. And always remember, SPC cares.